So what actually attracts people to Satanism? It's a good question, right? For those of you that think that Satanism is about worshiping the devil and doing evil things and hurting people and you know, drinking blood and sacrificing animals and shit like that, it's probably a very, um, very interesting question, probably an alarming question of what would attract people to Satanism, right? Especially, you know, teenagers or whatever. Um, well, I can tell you what attracted me to Satanism before I really knew what Satanism was, what got me to kind of want to look into it. Um, basically, uh, I basically didn't kind of didn't really swallow what uh, you know society was telling me. You know, God was and religion and stuff like that. Um, you kind of had a penchant for like you know the taboo. You know, kind of like wanted to see because the satanic panic was really big. All this attention in the media about Satanism, even though it was so-called you know negative attention, and 95% of it was disinformation that wasn't even true. Uh, that piqued my interest because I was like, really, there's actually groups of people that actually worship the devil? That doesn't make any sense, especially since if you believe in the devil, right, then you must believe in God, right? And if in the Bible, according to God, defeats the devil, the devil's bad, and you all go to hell, why would you worship the devil? That doesn't make any sense. So it was kind of a contradiction and oxymoron. It was kind of a, you know, circular logic that didn't make much sense to me, so I decided to seek it out. So curiosity, um, simple rebellion, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, it was taboo, it was forbidden, it was kind of, you know, you know it's kind of like what made you sneak a fucking beer from your dad's fridge, you know, knowing that you'd get in trouble. You know, that's something, it was rebellion, it was, you know, taboo. Um, but I know a lot of people say, well, Satanism, that's kind of a far stretch. Well, you know, some of us have, uh, you know, penchant for the unknown or the, you know, the forbidden and uh, it's exciting, it was exciting, you know, it was something that was new. Something that other people weren't doing and knew they shouldn't do it, but I could do it. One of those things, um, you know, teenage angst a little bit, curiosity, but the satanic panic, all that media media attention also, you know, attracted me to that too. Um, this all, and also like, you know, somewhat of a feeling like I didn't quite fit in, you know, I just like, okay, you know, wasn't really a jock, you know, we didn't really excel at sports. It wasn't horrible, but it was nothing, you know, special. Didn't really feel comfortable, like, you know, being on the baseball team or the football team or soccer team, which I was on all of them at one time, you know, and it was like, didn't really feel like I fit in there. Didn't feel like, you know, I, academically, I was I was better than average, but didn't really, had no interest in pursuing like, you know, the higher schooling and stuff like that. It just wasn't, I, yeah, I didn't fit in with those guys. Didn't fit in with the whole drama squad, you know, what can you just kind of like, you know, even the stoner crowds, that was like the closest thing I could identify with was, you know, stoners. So it was like, uh, and, you know, a lot of satanic imagery over there, too, at least back in the in the 80s and 90s, there was, uh, yeah, actually, I guess today is still, yeah, actually, maybe even more so today, come to think about it, yeah, um, so uh, I think a lot of us, uh, including myself, you know, just felt kind of alienated from, from society, you know, I mean, I didn't grow up in a, you know, a very religious household, I mean, I did a little bit, you know, when my father was more Catholic, and I had to, he made me go to church until I was about 10 or 11 or 12, when I just stopped, I put my foot down, I was like, nope, Nope, not doing this, Dad. <laughs> but uh, you know, it wasn't like I was—I rebelled because I was like so repressed religiously. So I mean, uh, but that—that that can make people drive people to the extreme end, right? Even though they may not know anything about Satanism, you know, they get the Bible beaten in the head, you know, long enough, maybe they just be like, "Fuck this." That's another reason that could drive people to Satanism. I, I've seen that happen to some people. Um, uh, you know, just a feeling of alienation, but also you know, just a natural curiosity. Most people are too fearful to actually seek something of that nature out. Most people, you know, also um, just swallow, you know, whatever they steal or whatever they're told, you know. And so people that even would have a curiosity oftentimes would think, oh, Satanism. Well, because I was told that Satanism, people worship, you know, slaughter animals and, you know, worship the devil and drink blood and all that shit, you know, or pedophiles and kill babies and all this. They just believe that shit. Why? Even without picking up any literature, without reading anything about it, they just believe it. Why? Because they're told that. Because they're told that's what it is. They're told that's what it is by the media, which is the number one way people believe their information. And the media spun Satanism to be about you know hatred and destruction and evil. Even the Christians and Catholics kind of don't really know what the fuck it is either, to tell you the truth. I mean, not most of them. There's a handful of them. People that actually uh, actually will tell you, uh, you know, pastors and stuff like that, like Bob Larson. He's a good one. Uh, he, he used to interview a lot of real Satanists on there. Um, there's a couple more Christians that, uh, well, well, you can get a straight answer from about Satanism. But, you know, whatever. Um, but the vast majority of people don't have any idea what it is, even the Christians. Um, 
so yeah that's that's that could drive people um certain people i think uh feel more um more like more at home with something that, that's against the grain or more counterculture not counterculture but you know something that's more um off the beaten path should we say you know something that's not the norm somebody you know uh and it's usually an individual who feels like they don't fit in or is alienated or something along those lines and a lot of us you know will seek have a have a, just a penchant for the dark i mean that's it you know want to see the macar want to see the taboo want to experience the unknown and want to kind of immerse ourselves in that i mean i know i did you know not not at a very very young age but by the time i was getting into teen, my teenage years like 12 13 right around there you know i started to read hp lovecraft i started to read clive barker stephen king i just started i started can't get it and then before i wasn't like goth back not quite that young later on in my life but not you know but it was just like i was starting to experiment with more darker stuff starting to read like even before saying about like magic like the you know paganism the wicca stuff like that i was starting to pick a lot you know so i was kind of like kind of finding my way there so those are the things that, that led me to saying it's about you know it could be death metal music music's a huge tool uh, lots of people lots of people found Satanism through death metal you know out of the you know let's say there's 10,000 people that like Bohemoth and you know I don't know fucking um, Vital Remains and uh, you know Cannibal Corpse and whatever and I'm sure I know there's a whole lot I'm not a big death metal fan so I'm just kind of naming a few but uh, you know um, the Orange Pazuzu or whatever <laughs> You know, there's a lot of people like, you know, let's, let's say there's 10,000 people that are exposed to Satanism via death metal. Let's actually, let's, let's, let's probably, let's closer to say it's probably a few million. But out of a few million, even if only a few thousand of those people actually pursue to actually understand Satanism on a philosophical level, they go beyond the, the music and go beyond the imagery and go beyond the, uh, the upside down crosses and the, you know, inverted pentagrams and the blood and the death and the stuff that you see that's prevalent in death metal and stuff like that and black metal. You know, a few thousand ever a few million might actually, well, probably, who knows the number is, but I'd hope it would be that that much at least. I should actually say, what is Satanism? What, what is this? You might actually go and get the Satanic Bible by Anton and read it, like I did. And then you're like, what? This has nothing to do with all this imagery and these death metal and black metal albums. You know, where's all this stuff? You know, it's, uh, it's <laughs> that imagery and that stuff is largely due to the media's representation of Satanism not what Satanism is on a philosophical level, which is just an atheistic philosophy that revolves around the self and self-indulgence as a rational philosophy, you know, a godless one. So it's, uh, I mean, you know, that doesn't really have to do with, you know, sacrificing animals or killing babies or that's all fucking humble, mumbo jumbo that's made up by evangelists or people trying to sell books or people about ritual abuse, suppress ritual abuse memories. That, of course, now they have a book they're trying to sell, you know, about these experiences by somebody who's brainwashed to, Somebody who's in on the profits or whatever it is, right? Somebody who's looking for attention. Who knows, right? I mean, uh, so for those of you parents that are watching this and being like, well, Frey, my dad, my fucking kid listens to fucking Bohemoth or whatever. I don't know. Where. And Frey's, what, what could I have done to make him a Satanist? It's possibly, you know, not what you've done, but, uh, you know, possibly you were fortunate enough to have a son that thought for himself and some, somebody that can, um, you know, um, yeah, thought for themselves and actually looked forward to, uh, um, you know, developing his own ideas and principles. So uh, you should be proud. So um, there you go.